Uh, hi guys, it is a glorious day here in the end times in paradise outside of Ocala, Florida on this gorgeous winter day, Tuesday, Tuesday, uh, February 19, 2019. I was kind of thinking of holding this We Are So Fucked Doomsday uh, headline of the day until Thursday for my depressed collapsitary and whine, but I'm going to go ahead and run with it. This is this hilarious story that has shown up on Yahoo News uh, from the little limp dick mainstream environmentalist at HuffPost. At HuffPost, and they're looking at how therapists are dealing with anxiety about global warming. Yeah, so if you are anxious about global warming, uh, HuffPost has interviewed some therapist for some advice on how to get over your anxiety about global warming. I'm not going to read this whole thing. I'm just going to touch on some of the high points. This is a long, involved story on what you can do to uh, resolve your anxiety about the collapse of a planet. And the 27 film first reformed a character is wracked with worry over global warming advocates not bringing a baby into the world because of climate change. It is a striking and unfortunately relevant statement about the devastating effects of global warming. One that many people are considering now, even off the silver screen, to breed or not to breed in the face of a collapse of a planet. Climate change and the uncertainty surrounding it is hardly just entertainment fodder. It's a reality that is now taking a toll on people's mental health. As global warming continues to trend, therapists are starting to have clients trickle into their office, offices express, expressing a multitude of fears on the subject. So we're going to hear from Palo Alto University psychologi psychologist Joseph Ruzek. Quote, Worry about environmental problems can cause anxiety and depression, Ruzak said, adding that therapists have an increasing need to help their patients, quote, challenge their feelings of helplessness, engage in constructive self-talk, and build a personal sense of resilience and optimism, close quote, in order to deal with fears that may be disrupting your day-to-day -day life. Here, according to HuffPost, and I guess Dr. Ruzak, is how therapists are helping patients deal with the very real worry around global warming. Okay, we're, you know, guys, this builds. I'm actually simply, because I know that not many people are going to sit here and listen, we're going to jump to my favorite, which was the very last one uh, in the list, and then we'll come back, because the last one should have been, been the first one. <clears throat> Schedule time to worry. Then in parentheses, yes, really take it away. These shrinks. <clears throat> oh, this is some other shrink, Dr. Katzman. You might not be able to curb all of your worrying, you know, about global warming, the sixth mass extinction, the collapse of a planet. So try setting aside time for it instead. Dr. Katzman, whoever she is, suggests scheduling time in your week, not, not in your day, scheduling time in your week to ponder the impl implications of things like global warming 
and limiting your worrying time to only then. Quote, set a timer and when the timer goes off, you have to start whatever is next on your schedule and engage in that and put aside focusing on worry until the next scheduled worry time, she said. If a thought pops up prior to or after your designated weekly worrying session, Katzman said, tell it, quote, I will give it attention during your scheduled time, close quote. She suggests you can also write that worrying thought down and revisit it later. There you go, and uh, that is the bottom line, but we're going to visit a few more suggestions to how to relieve your anxiety and depression. Focus on what you can control and turn that focus into action. Yes, uh, this is one of these shrinks, Melissa Wolak. Quote, I have found that I need to be proactive to give myself a sense of control and ultimately hope. There you go. So focus on something you can control. Uh, what is left in my life that I can still control? Is there anything left in my life that I can focus on that I can still control? I guess I can control uh, going to the Dollar Tree and buying some made in China shit to uh, take camping to meet up with a bunch of doomers. Now this next one I was just talking to a doomer friend of mine and we were talking about this very idea before I read this, flip off the television and that means, well by television they mean uh, YouTube and anything else for a little while talking about if, if you just find yourself down in this rabbit hole just getting more and more and more depressed about it, just turn it off. Just out of sight, out of mind. Flip it off. If you don't pay attention to it, if you just completely ignore it, like 99.9% .9 of the clueless fucking morons on the planet, there you go. Anxiety resolved. Flip off your television. There you go. So I am deciding, what do you guys think? Should I actually take a week off next week? You know, I'm going to be down there with my Doomer friends at Fish Eating Creek out in the middle of a swamp where we have no internet. Uh, should I just take a week off me and my Doomer friends and just not ever go on the internet for a week, which means there will be no rants for a week. Damn it, I did this last time I was sitting in this chair, my bullshit detector button flying everywhere. So anyway, let's hear from the uh, let's hear from the tribe. Should Hambone take a week off from chronicling the collapse of a planet? Okay, now there's always Get prepared. Get prepared for the collapse of a planet. For instance, putting together, they, they move from global warming, they don't mention how to prepare for global warming, so they have to go over there to earthquake put together an earthquake preparation kit, arming yourself with a spare cell phone charger can make you feel much more empowered. <laughs> there you go, guys. A spare 
cell phone charger is an excellent way to uh, re relieve your anxiety about the collapse of a planet. So uh, that is the number one list on your bug out kit. How about move your body? Move your body. Uh, there you go. I would suggest, as Torstein is, well, Torstein would get mad at me if I say this, so I better change this. Uh, I would suggest moving your body to Siberia or moving your body to Alaska or maybe Antarctica is a good place to move your body to. So move your body to uh, prepare. Now this one I'm okay with. Turn your attention to the now. And 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 all kidding aside, uh, you know when when you uh, the more you understand how fucked we are, the more you really will uh, appreciate the present moment, being in the here and now. Really will work. But that's not what they're talking about. This is some shrink named Sarah Thacker. She is, says, when you are able to fully connect and be present with this moment, right here, right now, those fears about a future catastrophe can dissolve. Well, I've lost my bullshit detector button in the last collapse and of course we couldn't not this was their second to the last one but I will make it the last one thank you Huffington Post reframe your negative thoughts into something more productive take all those catastrophe based thoughts of yours such as, we could die in the next storm that happens because of global warming, and reframe those pesky negative thoughts into reality-based thoughts. For example, quote, if a major storm comes, we will make plans to ensure that we will be safe. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm sure uh, Dr. Thacker has taken a trip to Panama City, Florida. I'm, I'm, I'm so glad that uh, thinking we could die in the next storm that happens because of global warming is not reality-based thinking. But anyway, I'm going to stay in this same vein. I'm going to wrap up today. So we are so fucked headline. Uh, and we're going to move over to Collapse Chronicles, and but stay in the same general neighborhood of the Doomosphere. And we are going to go from therapist to activist with these climate activists want you to give up hope. That is exactly uh, what you need to do is give up hope, which is the quickest way and the best way to dealing with anxiety and depression about global warming, as we're going to hear in this story, uh, the only way to deal with depression about global warming is to abandon all hope. So abandon all hope while you still can. Bye guys.